movie will begin in five moments, the mindless voice announced. Okay, so this is take three. <laughs> the, so the first time I started to record, I realized I had not pressed record. Then the second time I realized I didn't, I didn't hook up our microphones. <laughs> so we were doing it with no, Lip no audio. Today's video is sponsored by Native Sons Goods, makers of the most finely crafted heirloom quality guitar bag and camera straps on planet Earth. Native Sons are made from the finest hand-woven materials right here in the USA. They come in two or three inch widths and are fully customizable so you can play in style. Unlike other manufacturers, Native Sun straps are handmade one at a time with impeccable attention to detail. They are both riveted and sewn so they'll last multiple lifetimes. Treat yourself to a Native Sun's good strap. The best part is, they come already gift wrapped. So anyway, here we are uh, at Steve Wilson's studio. Some of you guys will probably recognize this. I'll put links up here in the description if you want to see where we came here uh, and looked at a bunch of really cool stuff including uh, Les Paul. Uh, 1958, owned by his good friend from the Kentucky Headhunters, uh, Greg Martin. And uh, today we are going to take a second look at a Les Paul that we looked at already. And this is a 1952 uh, Les Paul. And the first year of the Les Paul, this is before they even put a serial number on the thing. And uh, Steve, Invited, was gracious enough to invite me back and say, hey, if you want to come back and uh, check this out and help me do this. Uh, I put a bee in his bonnet last time I was here about That's this. right. Made me want to play it. I haven't played it for 40 years. Yeah, yeah. And the reason is, to explain the reason one more time. Yeah, when they made these in 52, the first year, they put this trapeze tailpiece and the strings come in from the front and wound under and go under so you can't rest your palm. The neck angle's real flat, the bridge has to sit real low. Yeah. You can't palm mute. So uh, this fellow at Mojo Axe, really super nice guy. He's got some nice gear himself. He hand machines these and uh, compensates them with this and you can put it right on the trapeze and adjust the height and it wraps over so it makes this playable like a modern guitar now. Very cool. Does he have instructions in here on how to yes. install it? Uh -huh. Okay. Cool. So we're going to do this on the channel today. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, stick around. I think, I guess we're going to also find out, because I'm curious about this, what is under these feet? Because I don't know if they, on the from the factory, if they put felt under here or what they did or okay. if it's unfinished or, or what. It should be interesting. So. The sparkling drinks are just dandy, the chocolate bars and the candy For the five people watching this <laughs> who actually have one of these, you know, <laughs> here you go. Here's how to get uh, compensated. Or in case you run across one. Uh, yeah, in case you run across one and you're, you're reluctant to buy it because you don't think you can play it. I guess that would be an important thing to say. So yeah, this should be interesting. We're going to try to follow these instructions to the best of our ability and not put any dings on this beautiful guitar and not break the neck off or <laughs> anything disastrous like that. Right, Steve? Hopefully. <laughs> That's our plan. To when you're, you've clipped all these off, be sure to grab the tool down there, use that, and then just grab it and scrape it all across the, the bridge. You've got, you've got cutters right there. What the fuck are you doing? I mean, right here. God. <laughs> <laughs> is there there's something there's like a little circle of, of something under the bridge let me get this out of the way and we'll see oh there it is they just sit there yeah yeah they just sit on i figured they just sat on there but i wasn't sure if they had like um you know little bits of felt or or what it was but i, I guess they left it unfinished didn't they maybe from the factory or is that like a that looks like that might actually be bits of the uh, chrome. Of the chrome, yeah, mm -hmm. ca that came off. I think that's exactly what that is. Are there any markings on that bridge at all, or is anything identifying it as Gibson or nope, patent pending? Or no, nope. they didn't even put a serial number on this guitar, so I doubt they got to uh, the yeah, part. Yeah. Yeah. This guitar is a great historical piece. It's not a great player piece, but I think we're going to try to make it both now. Yeah. Because the promise of this bridge gives me hope. When I first got this guitar, I played it through an amp. These P90s on this wood <clears throat> sounded amazing, but you couldn't 
intonate it or not. Yeah. It, it was horrible. Yeah. Right. It wouldn't intonate and you couldn't mute. I, I lay my palm right on the bridge when I play. So it was really awful in that regard. Hopefully this will fix all of that and right. make this a playable guitar now because the tone of the thing was beautiful. Right. Early Zeppelin kind of sound, so it kind of reminded me of more like a telly. Yeah. A little bit thinner than a Les Paul that you would think of, you know. Just kind of like a weak wound P, P, uh, vintage kind of it, wound, scatter wound. It made me think P. of communication breakdown style, yeah. real open, thinner tone, not, not thick like a Les Paul. Right, sweet. The tone was gorgeous, though. Man, and that top is gorgeous. Look at the, Isn't that look cool? at the, look I at love the finish. It. I love the check. Beautiful checking, yeah. You know, I, I never, I guess I never knew that uh, they made anything like that knob. Is that knob right there original? Because those are taller than those are original and they need to be buffed out. They've got the, they've uh, got cloudiness to them, don't they? Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. But they're taller than your typical uh, uh, gold. Uh, knobs that you see on Gibsons. They're and, taller. Uh, the fellow that made this Mojoax bridge, I sent him pictures of this guitar, uh -huh. and uh, he's, he's got some real nice guitars himself, and he told me that he had bought a, a power tool, an old power tool, right? and it had the same type plastic on it, and it was the same type of cloudiness. He said he put it on his buffer and it came out perfect, so I'm hoping these knobs are going to come out perfect. Yeah, so. that'll be sweet if they do. I mean, I'm sure they will. That's uh, yeah. You could probably even get a lot of the scratches and stuff, like the ring scratches and everything you kind of see on some of them. I bet you can even buff a lot of that out. Are they Bakelite? Did he say or did he know? He didn't know. I don't know what they would have been made out of at that time. That's probably what caused that. These are off gassing up, up here mm -hmm. in the closed case. Hell, this just this case is probably a thousand dollar case. I mean, probably two or three times. I, yeah, yeah. I, the last time I looked, they were at least a thousand yeah. for any anything fifties Gibson. You know, you say it's just a case, but when you open this case and that guitar is laying in it, it, it it's a symbiotic thing. It's, it, it's an aura, it, isn't it? It's not the same as pulling it out of a modern, much higher this. quality case. So. I'm gonna take the hardware off the top so we don't make, have an accident. All right. Did this somebody uh, did somebody lock those in? Probably I hate I me. hate when they do yeah. that. Probably me. Dang it, man! I You're guess. one of those guys. I guess. <laughs> uh, I have to show you how to restring, man. <laughs> After how many years? How many years have you been playing? <laughs> I could teach you something. <laughs> Never too stupid to learn. He's like, don't you presume to teach me anything, young man. Oh, no, I did not say that. <laughs> I try to learn something new every day. See what kind of fret wear and everything we got on here. I haven't played it in probably 40 years, so I'm sure the cowboy chords are pretty worn in. You got, you got to glue, glue that one back down, I believe, right there, yep. Is it coming out? Yeah, that one's coming out. These would have been, let's see, 52. These, those I'm should sure still be. Shrunk. Those probably are pre plastic. I thought, are, they, are those are plastic? Are they? I they, think. they look like they've shrunk. Yeah, yeah. Only the plastic really does that. It, uh, if it was pearl. The pearl would be hard and. Yeah. That looks like plastic, yeah. It's really coming up. You can feel it. I didn't think they uh, started the plastic huh. until I didn't like think about that. 55. I don't, I was thinking plastic didn't come until then. Maybe that was just on acoustics. I don't know. Interesting. Now the directions say you may have to bend the rods on that trapeze. See that slight bend in them? Right they here. say you may have to straighten those a little bit to make the bridge. Oh, right. I see. Oh, yeah, I got you. And he recommends a, a, a board with two holes and stick it down in there and slightly, you know. Uh, a vise might work too. Yeah, uh, he said uh, that was the other way, a vise with two wood blocks on it. With wood blocks, yeah. But yeah, that's what he's talking about, that slight bend right there. We're going to have to straighten mm -hmm. that out. So let's, I guess let's go ahead and take the guitar out and we'll take the trapeze completely off okay. so that we don't scratch anything while we're trying to work with just the trapeze. The neck profile on this is actually a lot thinner than I would have expected. I would have expected a little more chunky baseball bat, like but that's not, yeah. that's not this at all. This is, 
This is almost closer to something more modern. I, yeah. Like, I mean, this is like really thin. I'm really uh, excited about being able to play that because I love the way it feels. Yeah. I would just be very careful because the thinness of the neck too is going to contribute to you know, breakage. possible breakage. <laughs> I'd just be very careful with this one. But I try often not to drop it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, try try more often. <laughs> Let's see, I don't know if you can see it or not. There's a little patent pending stamp there. There you go. Now maybe you can see it. So we're going to take this trapeze off and we'll start from there. Are you going to leave this style of of strap lock on or are yeah, you gonna, I'm gonna you leave it a just like one? that. Okay. Yeah. Only because I, I played it one night live. Uh-huh. And I've left it ever since then. So over forty years it's been on there. I don't want to take it off. Okay. The leather's probably dry rotted by now. Well so. I was gonna say but it being the leather that I wouldn't trust. I'll put some mink oil on it and it'll come right back to life. Okay, so all right, so here's our first little hiccup. So I've got all three of the screws out of this, um, but it won't come off. And I think that's because the ground wire is actually soldered to this thing. I don't want to just yank it off of there um, without confirming how it's, how it's on. But there's something, something's definitely holding that. This is a new one, I'm, you know, you don't every day come across 52 less Pauls that you're working on, so this is a first for me. Let's um, let's maybe open up the cavity and just kind of see, I don't know, I, I don't know, because we're going to have to run a gr new ground wire regardless. Uh, does it say anything on the instructions about the well, ground wire? Well, this, this stays on there, so. Yeah, the only reason to take it off, I guess, would be to bend those. That's I mean, that was the idea, mm -hmm. but we might have to change tack here because yeah, if we don't have to take that off, I think we can probably bend that the, where it lays. There. Yeah, I think so too. I think we're going to have to change uh, directions and put this back, just leave this on uh, because that ground wire is holding it on yeah. for, some, for some reason. So let's go ahead and leave that so we don't have to disturb that. Okay, so here's our next little hiccup that we've run into. So we've got this hardware back on, so we're going to do the trapeze. Um, we're, and we don't even know for sure if we're going to have to bend this yet. Uh, and that's what he's, we're going to find out. But first we need to see if we can get this down because if you'll notice it, this um, wants to kind of stay in the position where the old bridge was. And it just needs a little bit, I think it needs a little bit of like sewing machine oil or something up in here to, just to kind of wiggle that loose a little bit, a little bit looser than it is now. We're going to put a towel up under here to absorb any, any drops and uh, try to get a little bit of oil in here. And what we don't want to do is get the oil on the finish because it'll soak up under the finish. I'm going to tip it up on its Pretty side on so we can yeah. get it to just kind of fall down in there. All right. We'll spray it from the other side now. Flip yep. It. Yep. Let me work it. Work this side just a second. That's that's already loose, a little looser than it was. It's crazy. I mean, I, I've, I've uh, I fixed a lot of expensive guitars and stuff, mm -hmm. but nothing quite like, you know, nothing quite like this. That fixed him up. Yeah, that's way better. Now it should go all the way down. Okay. That oil will help it keep it from rusting too. Exactly. So. It's a penetrating lubricant too, so. Let's just let's just leave this for a second. Sure. Uh, while we figure you can out work what, on it with that. Yeah. yeah the whole what, thing. That's what I was going to say. What? Mm -hmm. Just in case it continues to drip. All right. Let's look at our instructions now. <laughs> uh, now that we're done, yeah. let's look at the instructions. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the man way of doing things? Exactly. So the the cool thing also about this, um, we were talking about it. This thing will sit right down on the top, and it has these little feet on it. Uh, that will allow you to adjust the height after the fact. So you've got, you've got a little height adjustment screw up here on the top that will feed down. And it's extremely low profile, very low. That's a great design and the craftsmanship is impeccable on I that. I was going to say, just, just he, feeling of this. He even ages it. 
for you. So when it puts on there, it's already aged. It and looks looks in like keeping. it came out. I, I really can't wait to hear this thing. And he put a lot of time in the compensation. He said the tuning is excellent with this. So right. I'm really excited. Well, all we have to do is get the distance correct from the twelfth fret to here, and then match it to there. So. Right. Um, so it'll intonate. So what we need to. I think he, he says on the here, A and the okay. B string for intonation. Is this where he talks about height adjustments may be made from the top side using a jeweler's blah, 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 blah. Remove the two supplied height adjustment screws uh, to reuse the original stock pedestals and thumb wheels. So if you take his oh, height I adjustments out, you can use the original pedestal thumb wheels. Uh, that's what was confusing me earlier. Unless, uh, I was, unless it's too high with those, then you have to use it. Right. So I, here's what I was thinking. Uh, it's because some of these neck angles are probably all going to be different for right. this year because they were figuring they things out. They hadn't figured it out yet, right. Exactly. So some of the ones in the run, you're going to have to use these old pedestals um, with this. And I think this might end up being one of those. Let's, let's take a look at it. So let's just... Uh, let's just stick it on here for a second and just kind of see. So if we sight down, at, that looks. Because I think this will come is, over the top now. Yeah, I think this is the lowest. This may be the lowest, the shallowest neck angle I've ever seen on a Les Paul. It really so is. This is. It's different than any one I've yeah. ever seen. This is definitely the shallowest I've ever seen. So I wouldn't be surprised if if even this might be a bit high. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. So let's we let's, could get a chisel and chisel this out and then reset the neck. Let's do let's angle. do that. Can we go get a hacksaw? Oh, I got a hammer and a screwdriver. Right? Oh heck yeah! Now I've got a water hose. We can wash it oh, off yeah, first. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so part of the idea here is you take these old uh, nuts that held the old trapeze on, and they have to go in here to hold this on. And right now, we're he's looking for some uh, some grease or some Vaseline. We're gonna grease this before we put it back on, so that it'll be nice and greased up be easier to move later on if you have to adjust the intonation or any, anything like that and it'll prevent it from uh, rusting but so you can tell this is before they worked out all the modern neck angles it's just so shallow you see where it meets the the body there it just meets at such a shallow angle it's very interesting seeing something like this you're just not used to seeing it in this kind of prototype form did you get, find something? This is uh, neosporin kind of stuff, okay. and it might be a Vaseline it base. It probably has a base in it. That's, yeah, yeah that, and yeah. the antibacterial things won't hurt it. I oh, yeah. Think, so. it keep COVID. It keep your guitar from exactly. getting COVID. We don't want it to get that. We should give it the vaccine, your guitar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's actually I think, I that's think actually it's Vaseline gonna... base. It feels like Vaseline. Yeah. And as long as it's not on something porous, it won't absorb. So yeah, Steve's going to grab a set of strings, but here's here's basically how far we've gotten at the moment. We're just uh, we're sitting here with this now. The again, the instructions kind of said you may have to unbend these the the tailpiece a little bit, and I, I'm not sure we're going to have to do that on this one. It this looks like it might end up sitting just fine. Um, the the neck angle is really my only concern at this point. So what we're going to do, we're going to put the uh, low E string, and we're going to put the high E string. And then we're going to start give, taking some intonation measurements and see uh, how far we need to back these out to adjust the intonation to swivel this. Okay, I'll, I'm going to show you how uh, I put strings on just because uh, I'm going to teach, teach Steve something here. <laughs> okay, so what I do, I just, I, there was actually a pamphlet and I got this from a pamphlet and I started doing it this way. Uh, and it was a Gibson pamphlet. It was like an official Gibson. I was like, well, they ought to know then. And it was early on, I guess, when I sort of learned to do this. And I've seen so many people do the locking thing where they bend the string over and put, kind of fold it under. So it kind of makes it really hard to get off of there later. Um, but I always put it over the first time and then the next time around, it'll go under. So as you tighten this up, and there's not gonna be very much left. So there's very little wrapped on there, first of all. Um, so there's not a whole lot of just wadded on there. So if you're new to stringing guitars, you're not going to get, you know, you don't want to get four, five, six goes around if you can avoid it. I mean, now sometimes the, you screw the wound up. strings I usually do 
less than the unwound. Less the unwound, than the unwound. Yeah, the unwound I'll usually do about twice that much. The unwound I'll go, yeah, about maybe four times around, something like that. Uh, but the, uh, yeah, but these wound strings, you don't have to do that much. And what that does is it prevents all this stuff up here from getting bunched up and then just giving you uh, tuning problems later. But just looking at the, uh, the height right here of the string action, uh, this is almost all the way down. We do have some room on the, uh, the trapeze here, so I don't think the trapeze is, is going to be an issue. I don't think we're going to have to bend those like the, uh, the guy suggested. Uh, we may have to, but we're going to have to back this all the way down, I think, to get this sat all the way down on the guitar top. I, I think for some players, that actually might be good, but it's a little higher I than I, I would like want. I like the higher action. So. Do you? Okay. But anyway, that's how I put strings on. I know some people rap and they um, do the locking thing, and I know it, it works for a lot of people and they swear by it, but it just makes restringing very hard when you're taking the strings off. Mm -hmm. And on a guitar like this, you don't want to be up here with a tool like he was earlier trying to, mm -hmm. you know, take strings off with some kind of tool because you are going to slip at some point and just go, you know, and mar up the headstock. So anyway, that's why I mentioned that. I try to utilize every part of the animal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So when I clip these strings off, I'm so tight that I use this when I'm doing amp work as a ground bus because it takes solder really well. New guitar strings are easily soldered, they're really clean, and you can make great ground buses in your amp, amp work with these. It would also work really well tying two pins together, like on a, on, you know, a tube socket or something like that. That's a really good idea. Yeah. Okay, so here's the beauty of roughing in uh, intonation. Um, you, it doesn't, you don't really have to have all the strings on a guitar to kind of rough in intonation. You can sort of do that at the end, but I don't know if you're gonna be able to hear this or how well you're gonna be able to hear it, but. That is pretty darn close. A little bit sharp, or you bent it. I, I, well, I, I yeah. That is real damn close, actually. See, that one's... See, I'm just going to tighten it up slightly so you can hear it a little better. That, I think that's why he does it, because a lot of people have trouble with their low hearing. Yeah. So that's why he, he recommended to use the A as a rough. See, that's pretty... So flat to me. Is it sharp? I think it's pretty close. I think it's close, close enough. enough to start. I think it's close enough that we can get the rest of the strings on and then we can do uh, minute yeah. adjustments. Uh, really all you have to do is kind of just back off uh, the three strings on this side if you want to like for instance t tighten this up any but the thing is I think this is already as tight as it'll go. Okay. I think the nuts already cinched all the way in so okay. Uh, it's not going to go any f uh, any f flatter, so. Okay. That sounds good here. Uh, that's pretty damn close. Yeah. It really is. So I, I think we're going to be pretty close, even if we just slap the rest of the strings on it and roll with that for now. So go for it. Yeah, let's let's roll let's roll with that, and then we'll adjust this down probably as far as it'll go. Because, like this. I was telling him. Uh, it, it's just so slightly you, you high, but take it down a little bit now. I think. I think we can do that at the end. Tell me if when you to want. Stop. Well, before we get tension on it, uh, go go all the way down. I think go all the way down until this is till that is actually sitting on the top, and I just want to see it. Right there. Yeah, that right there That's is, is beautiful. Check um, this side, Brad, over there. Yeah. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. That might lock it down to the body better too. You know? uh, yeah. Yeah, it may, it may so do. It's, so the, the acorn nuts are all the way back and those are all the way down and I, it's perfect. Yeah, <laughs> and, and like I said, I think this is the lowest neck profile I've ever seen on a, yeah. on a Les Paul period. I, I think so. he put a lot of thought into this bridge. Yeah. He really made this to retrofit this. And that's a labor of love because there's only a couple of hundred of these guitars. Yeah. So He's he not going to make a million of, bucks on this. So yeah, and they were a, so reasonably priced. I mean... 
Isn't that I think unbelievable? One hundred and fifty dollars yeah. for something custom. Oh, that's beyond reasonable yeah, for something. For like something that. he can't sell more yeah. than a couple hundred of, you know. Because <laughs> they're it's never going to reissue this. Right. It's not like you're ever going to have to retrofit yeah. a reissue. So I, I'm, I'm yeah. really impressed with this guy. He's really that's crazy. He's, and then also, how many of the ones that that were made in the beginning are even around still in yeah. this form? Right. Anyway, you yeah. know, without that would without be interesting to know how many survived. Yeah. And I think they deserve to survive. I was telling, I was telling uh, uh, Steve here off, off camera. I was like, I think, I think the thing to do is to leave this original, is not not to mess with it. Because to me, it's about the historical. Um, you can always get a Les Paul that'll sound like pretty much like a Les Paul. I mean, honestly, I mean, there's something to a '58 uh, and a '59, and and those guitars. You pick them up. I mean, the wood is different. It's it's lighter. It feels like it's the lighter. The neck angle makes a difference in the sound. Yeah, um, yeah. There are, there are a lot of differences, but I don't, but I think to go retrofitting something like this that that is never going to be perfect anyway because you would have to take the neck off and change the neck angle. I think and do all kinds of you'd have to do so much to it. That, you know, there are some people that take these 52s, 53s, and 54s that have the P90s. Uh huh. And they route them and put humbuckers and make 58, 59, 60 copies. Yeah. You know. I know. I know. That's that's what I'm kind of speaking out against right now. It's like, yeah. you know, I can understand why they would do it. And I, and it definitely, I think, makes it a more playable guitar for sure. Like if it's done competently and, you know, all mm -hmm. that. But uh, I just think, I don't know. There's When you dra drag this out, just the fact that it was the first year Les Paul, um, and it was in the state that it's in, basically untouched, you know, right. from, from being a first year. That's special, you know, that's something. When I bought it, I thought it was missing the pickup selector ring, but then I found out after the fact they, they don't didn't have come them. with them. They yeah. Didn't, yeah. They didn't put those on until a year or two later, I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> this even has the little... Uh, you don't have a string winder, do you, by chance? I do, but I don't want to use it on those in case it... it uh, oh, okay. Breaks the, Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, and actually, um, on that, I mean, that's an interesting discussion, too. Like, how much of something like this do you leave uh, in situ knowing that eventually something will break? Gonna like, fail. for instance, right. like the, uh, the pit guard. Right. Rather than risk breaking the pit guard, Those get a reproduction. Yeah. Get a reproduction and put a reproduction on it. Put that one in the case, and maybe even the same with those. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, the knobs. So People you don't do break that one. with handles a lot. The yeah. old dog bones. They'll replace them and keep the original before it's broken in a bag. And, right. You know, but I don't carry them around that much. Right. And those tuners, the plastic's going to have some shrinkage, and they could separate from the post. Man, that is that awful close. That sounds <laughs> That's awful. That's really yeah. close, I almost dead on, mm -hmm. without even adjusting it. Yeah. I know one thing now, I don't want these up that high, so. Yeah. Yeah, those are definitely gonna need adjustment too. Mm-hmm. He's, uh, right now he's just adjusting the pole pieces on the and I like a pickup. little bit of an arch on them. I like the high E and the low E a little lower than the other ones. And I think the B is the one that sticks out a lot. It's usually uh -huh. uh, is usually louder than yeah. the, the rest. But the, I'll fine tune that by ear later. Yeah. I just thought I'd do that while the strings weren't in the way. But yeah, thanks, Steve. I appreciate you inviting me over to do this with you. I, I love I, your company, man. I always learn something when you show yours, up. Yours too, man. I feeling is definitely mutual on that. Um, there was another fellow who, who was going to do this this work. He, Steve had already tapped him to do it. And, <laughs> I broke uh, his heart. <laughs> and I said, "Oh man, I wish you'd ask me." And Steve was like, "Well, I mean, I guess you could come do it. Were you wanting to film it?" And I said, "Yeah, I'd be, be cool if we could." And uh, I said, "But I don't want to take you know any work from that other fellow or nothing like that." And he said, oh, "I don't think it'd be a big deal." And and sure enough, though. What would you say whenever he was over here? He said, Are "You sure you don't want me he to take those?" He was here <laughs> yesterday. He said, "Man, I could take those and bring them back tomorrow." Uh, I feel bad now. And but I, you know what? We, we've got a '54 with the Mojo Axe 
replacement compensated stop tailpiece or the bridge yeah. that we're going to put on. So we'll invite John back for when we do that, and we'll get him in on it. This is a this is a '54 that we haven't seen yet on the channel, so this will be this will be a fun one too. And this one had been refinished at some point, right? That's yes, the refinished it, it was one. a gold top. I bought it refinished. Um, uh, Billy Gibbons was holding it, playing it when I saw it, and then. The, he didn't want it because it was refinished. He, he wanted it, a real yeah. gold top. Yeah. And then I bought it that evening from the guy that was going to sell it to him. A, a, a guy I grew up with was offering it to Billy. This was back in the uh, mid to late 80s, I guess. I mid was to late working 80s. a show with Gibbons, yeah. You, you probably got in it right then, I imagine, for one that's refinished. Unbelievable. And, yeah. yeah. This one, too. Gosh. Man, I wish I had a time machine. <laughs> we really well, that, do. Like that ad I sent you. Th this gold top Les Paul, there's a music store in Indiana. Uh -huh. This sold for $240 new. Yeah. That's. And I said, I'm going to order three or four of those. You want me to get you a mm -hmm. couple? Yeah. That's we're, great. We're, we're damn close right there. I mean, that's. That's within. You know what? That, that's that's within your ship. vibrato, really. Yeah, exactly. I mean. So that's everything at its default position and its perfect. Yeah. That's craftsmanship. Yeah, it, right? yeah, it is. That speaks a lot of what yeah. th this guy did. Exactly. Yeah. It's, and the original guitar. I mean, that that's and and he took that and made it fit on the original guitar. Well, the thing is, cool. I have I have to imagine that Gibson was a lot less wasteful, especially back then, too. You like know, they an had hand luthier. They were just coming out of arch tops yeah. and all that, so they yeah. had real luthiers. Right. Have you noticed the hand-carved arch on this, how deep oh, yeah. that is? Oh, that, yeah. That's like, that's beautiful. It is. Um, but the thing is, I think as they figured things out, they wouldn't have... You know, they, they wouldn't have tossed a bunch of guitars like if they thought, well, we can do this better. Let's let's burn all these that we just made. They wouldn't do that. They would, right. well, let's sell these and then we'll continue to improve right. it, you know. And these weren't CNC. These were all hand carved literally with a, a big wood carving tool, you know. Yeah. I've seen pictures of the guy shaving the tops to spec, which is pretty cool. Now we can't get this out because it's so tight on there. <laughs> okay, uh, we should be still be able to lift that up. All right. I, I can loosen the string slightly if we need to. Yeah. I hope so. Did we leave it too long? I hope not. No, we're good. Yeah, we got Look it. at that. See there? Now the See intonation there? will be so off. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this was the, you got to leave this on. <laughs> well, it's too bad. You got to put that. Yeah. Oh, he says that in the instructions. Put about, yeah. you know, 50. Eight napkins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> brawny paper towels. He recommends brawny paper towels, right? Yeah. No Viva. Man, listen to that, though. Listen to the. Beautiful. It's gonna ring. Ring. Yeah. Oh, this guitar, it's got such an open sound. You will love it when you hear it. Slight, I think maybe a cent flat or, or two, but that's it. Not, no, maybe not. Close <laughs> it's, enough it's for right on there. Close enough for all three chords that I know, Brad. Yeah. And, I, and well, and to also, unless you're playing up here, doing a lot it of It doesn't matter, right, here, yeah. And doing a lot of, uh, major thirds and stuff i mean you know i mean you might want to comp but this is built-in compensation anyway you can't mm -hmm. do much for that but but um i'm with you i think he did an excellent job machining this I, the guy really who did this yeah so yeah the, the the five people watching the channel you know who who happen to own one of these you know <laughs> who be probably sure you order one of these bridges yeah be sure you order one of these bridges that he should probably put the price up on if he is only selling for 150 I'll tell you bucks, what, it, it's I mean, maybe he'll get some competition, but I can't imagine oh, nobody it's, it's going to be a that. fierce market, you know? Yeah, nobody could beat that. It's not a gold rush. It's not like you're trying to build a better mousetrap, something yeah. everybody ha wants, you know? Yeah. So this is the way I usually do things. I'll, I'll kind of put this finger down like this and then raise this up off the board about as far as I can. So, and then in this position, usually that gives me about two turns down here, but that's just my body. I mean, you're the size of your finger is going to determine how much of this you do. But I've kind of worked out over the years like the shape to put my hand in right here that gives me enough slack to go around a couple times. So that's how I string. 
and then over once and under under one or once or twice more. Sandwich that puppy. Yep, sandwich it in there. And the thing is, like you said, with the you know with the wound str strings, it doesn't they won't slip really anyway. Right. I mean, regardless. And and with uh, with even these higher strings, if you stretch them properly and everything, they're not going to slip either. You know, by the time you get them locked on the uh, on the post, they're just you know. A lot of people focus on stuff like that, I think. And uh, why is my guitar not staying in tune right? Mm -hmm. Well, usually it's because you didn't stretch the strings when you put the strings on. You didn't take enough time to sit here yep. and go like this. The Dario makes up. a good tool. They put on the strings and do and that. You just down do the that. Yeah, and it really stretches. Them yeah, well. I. I uh, you, you'll watch me tune, and that's that's exactly what I do. I'll stretch I'll tune them, yeah. and then stretch and then mm -hmm. tune, stretch, tune, stretch, about probably use about four to five times I'll do that and then they're ready. All right, so there's all the strings. I, I, don't, I don't know that there's much we can do to lower this anymore. I think it is all the way down. I'm not a big fan of low action, so. What do you think when we get up to pitch? Is it gonna be? I don't hear any buzzing. You'll always be able to also compensate for that somewhat. Um, uh, by, by adjusting the uh, when we get up to tune, I we wouldn't can adjust. want it any lower than that, so I think we're good. Yeah, but I'm saying it, it's going to raise up a little bit as we tune it up to pitch. Yeah. Uh, so if it gets too high here in a second, then we can adjust that out. Hopefully with the truss little, little mm -hmm. truss rod tweak. While we've got it, do you want do you want to lube or clean pots or any of that well, stuff? Well, they were we all covered or? in that white stuff, and I just took a, a Kleenex or something and rubbed them, and they came off. So yeah. I'm not worried about that. Okay. All right, let's tune her up. Generals gathered in their masses. Yep. How close am I? Am I a little flat? Oh, I'm a little sharp. sharp. Uh, <laughs> Look, here, here. There you go. Uh, pretty close, though. Is that what I am? Sharp? Slightly sharp. <laughs> that's pretty, that's not bad, though. No, not bad. I think I'm optimistic today. That's, that's what exactly. it is. Exactly. <laughs> if I was depressed, I'd be a little flat. But this is the great thing about intonation. If you have the height pretty much set, uh, you don't even have to really tune all the strings necessarily to, to do intonation adjustments uh, on one string. Now in this case, uh, this is, the intonation is kind of set by the bridge itself. So really all we're concerned about is the high part and the low part. So I'm gonna intonate with the, with the tuner on the E uh, and then the high E and then I'll come down here to the low E or the A perhaps and like he suggested and do the same thing. But the good thing about this is once you uh, get this set, you should never have to touch it again. Um, yeah. And as long as you, as long as you change strings with the same gauge of strings, yeah. uh, that's the key really to keeping your guitars intonated. If you change string gauge, then you have to come back usually and tweak intonation. But uh, if you use the same gauge and same brand, brand of strings, you're golden on, on intonation usually. Unless you go to a different climate, sometimes you might run into issues but uh, not, not often on electrics. But I think it's, I think this thing's gonna play all right though. Like I said, the lowest, the lowest neck profile on any Les Paul I've ever seen. And like I said, man, this neck is not chunky. You guys, uh, I think a couple of you were asking in the comments, well, was the neck chunky on that thing? And uh, I had not even laid hands on it, but today was the first day I laid any hands on this. And this is not a chunky neck. This is like a, this is like a 60s neck profile, I would say almost, yeah, it's isn't it? Yeah, pretty thin, yeah. It really is. Still, I mean, we're Still one sharp. like one cent sharp. Let's, uh... Hmm. 
It's, mm -hmm. it's getting closer. There, yeah. It's wanting to get there. Have you got any left on it? Yeah. Yeah, we sure do, I believe. Another half turn, I think you'll be there. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably going to get us there right there. There we are. That's it. You know, a lot of persnickety people, they thumb their noses at trapeze tailpieces because they think, oh, the energy transfer isn't right or something. I've always had good luck with trapeze tailpieces. I've never had a problem with them. Yeah, I think uh, Dream Theater, their guitar player always used trapeze tailpieces. Really? No, I'm kidding. John Petrucci? I'm just I was kidding. like, what? I'm <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't think I've ever seen it with a trapeze tailpiece. <laughs> now, see, what we should do is get on here and rave about how great these are now, that, that they're even better than a 59. Oh, you know? God, yeah. Yeah, exactly. This thing's even better than a 59. I like, could get Greg over here and say, this one's better than my 58. And we'll, we'll do a video of that. Yeah. And then like everybody will want these. One, one <laughs> yeah. And then I'll sell that one and before they figure it out. Before they figure out that, yeah, it's, that we're full of shit, then we'll mm -hmm. buy up all the 59s. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. We have somebody do a Jimmy Page video that they've mocked up, you know, and and say, you know, I, I, I used that 52 Les Paul yeah. on, on, on the first three albums. Do a deep fake of Jimmy <laughs> yeah, Page yeah, saying, exactly, like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, on those yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I'll dump this one on the market real quick. Yeah. And then buy two or three 59s. That's like a Bond villain, something a Bond villain would do. Next thing you're going to want to do is what? a refret. Uh -huh. <laughs> but yeah, check it out. The action's perfect. Is it perfect for you? Yeah. Yeah. I'd probably want it down slightly lower if it was mine, but uh, but it's close. I think really what would make it perfect for me is uh, is if it had a refret and taller frets. That would help, yeah. Yeah. you bring him over and lay him face down and we'll clean those controls real quick and you can shoot the inside of the cabinet. Sure, yeah, yeah, good idea. What is it? Those little silicone things that hold the straws in on those cans. Oh, <laughs> that's cool. I think they've gone out of business now. I've had these for years. Hold it. Yeah. Yeah, so you don't lose your straw. <laughs> but somebody was selling a pack of these for like 60 bucks or something for two Good or Lord. Yeah. Because buy another them. straw. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I do like but having see, it handy. But these, but these kill uh, the wildlife, though. Remember, they kill turtles, man. The turtle killers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they get in the oceans, man, and cause all kinds of havoc. I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm against plastic in the ocean as much as the next guy, yeah, but, well, but, outlawing, but outlawing straws specifically, you know, yeah. and making a crusade, it just seems like one of those things that people would do to placate. <sighs> makes you feel better. Yeah, makes you feel better about yourself, yeah. you know, so you can pat yourself on the back. I did something great today. I used a, mm -hmm. you know, disintegratable, biodegradable straw or something. <laughs> now, Edie uses stainless steel straws, which she likes. I bet those are cool. I've, I've, I've seen they are, people, uh -huh. yeah. They got a silicone tip on the end. So we've got. Uh, same kind I was of. Say, I was wondering if that, yeah. Well, interesting. I've never taken the back off there, so. Uh, I don't know you've never had the back off? Nope. All right, well, here's what we're looking at. It looks stock to me. Yep. Now, see, that is not a bumblebee. Nope. And at, at no voltage, they're probably not going to be leaking. It doesn't matter a bit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They did work. You could hear them working. So. Yeah. Well, it's not no voltage. It's like a quarter of a volt or something, yeah. maybe. 50 millivolts. Whatever, yeah. But, I mean, almost all those caps are good up to five or six volts. You know? there's, there's, no, there's no doubt in my mind that these are original, but I can't see any. Uh, I was looking for a date code. They're probably on the sides because they're stack pole, I would imagine. 
So you would actually have to remove them to see them. I don't know when they started using it. Center Lab. Did they use Center Lab? Center Lab? I can't remember. I think on the 50s they were Center Lab. Okay. I think. I think those are all written on the side as well, though. Or were they Stackpole? I don't know. I don't, I don't really. Study I'm not. That yeah, thing. I'm not a, a historian on on a lot of this stuff, but I do know that. I'm Probably not, if you took these out, you'd see I'm not a guitologist the... or anything, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see a name on these. Okay. You see, I, there's stuff written on them, but I can't tell what it is. It's hard in this hard to tell in the light. Are they point oh twos? Uh, I can't even see that much. Okay. Um, I can't. I could scrape on it, and but I don't want to remove all the. Nah, I'm not worried about it. I don't want to remove all the wax on there. Cause it, you know, I just. Yeah. It wouldn't help them out, do them any favors. I'm surprised they even worked literally after being in that case for 40 years. Yeah. I've, I've never cleaned them. Wow. Seemed like the one that was worst was, was this one here on the treble pickup. Probably the one that got turned the least. Yeah. Yep. Now that's the base pickup, right? You spray? Did you spray the treble pickup or the base pickup? I'm doing all of them, but oh, I haven't uh, gotten to the treble one yet. I thought. Oh, I thought you sprayed the treble pickup. You sprayed uh -uh. the base. Okay. I see. Yeah, I, I, I say the opposite of what I'm doing just to confuse the audience. Man, you are really good at that. It gets me more, uh, I, get, I get more, more negative uh, comments. Yeah, I get more comments that way, you know, I get more interactions. And <laughs> Any press is good press. Yeah. yeah. And then take that green can and go through them after you do that. What's that? The green can, it, it has a little lube in it. Oh, okay. The deoxid takes the oxidation off and then. If you don't lube a carbon pot, it, it tends to wear the carbon trace off, so. Yeah, and that puts the lube back in it. Right. After it's uh, deoxified. I think if you did that for 20 or 30 minutes, all that white stuff would come off those pots. Probably. <laughs> that's, that's pure COVID-19 right there exactly. on all the pots. That's what that is, that's what caused yeah. it. Everybody thought it was bats, but really it was white shit off of a 52 West Paul. Off, off gas plastic. <laughs> <laughs> Never over tighten your screws either, man. Mm -hmm. There's no sense in it, especially on stuff like this. It doesn't take much to hold, hold a piece of plastic in, so there's no sense to in cinching down on something like that. You just put it in there, and that's all you need to do. No, I'll play it. Ooh, the jack, we didn't do the jack. That's right. That's, you can get that from the outside. Here. Here, go ahead and do it. Okay. Man, you show a lot of faith in my ability to catch. Oh, I've seen you catch before. <laughs> oh, shit. See, See I have no faith in me yours. Catch. You just yeah. the fender behind you. Yeah, rock and roll.
it's got it, isn't it? It does. It I does. can't put my finger on it, but. <laughs> Junior Watson, who's a Hollywood Fats disciple, kind of, they that's the tone that I love, that thick throaty, but yeah. still distinguishable. Still, you can hear, hear the Not note. Not mushy, yeah. yeah. Gibson. It's very present. It, it, it is. Yeah. Presence is great. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Sounds great, so I didn't try the middle position. something on here we should mention or you should mention yeah <clears throat> the reason he said those thumb wheels <clears throat> you may want to put the thumb wheels in place of his adjustments that's the way for that guitar but the ES 225 and 295 oh, that, make sure you mention that different. will work on that too because there's a lot of those out there Okay, yeah, so you said the ES what, the two... The 225 and the 295. You okay, so the 225 and the 295, uh, this bridge will work on also, and that's why he said those thumb wheels might, you might transplant those. But yeah, that's definitely, that's coolest thing I've done in a little while, man. Thank you for having Brad, me along, that, I appreciate that it. That sounds so much better than I even imagined, remembered it did. You yeah, know? that sounds fantastic. I mean, and, it, and honestly, if it were me, maybe the next time you change strings, I would probably even get some uh, replacement clusons and like just keep some replacements on, maybe some 18 to ones. That way you don't break the these. Yeah. And then also, uh, I would probably go ahead and replace this for the time being too, just so you don't crack it or something silly. I, you know? I may even take that but, off because I, yeah. don't, I, don't, I don't use pick guards anyway. So. Right. But yeah, thanks everybody for uh, showing up, for watching the video. Uh, thanks to Steve for having me over once again, and we'll see y'all later.